Hello, everybody. Welcome to this week's episode of Late Night Craft Talk. Tonight, we are doing sign language. That'll be the tonight's subject, and we'll also be talking about, kind of, kind of as an extended project, we'll be talking about, you know, when I'm getting all kinds of little notices here, that we're live. Cool. Dancing Bear and Elk Rack are live on multiple platforms, because you can hear my guys, my phone's going ding, ding, ding. At least it's not going ding, dong, ding, dong, which would be telling my truth but anyway so tonight we'll be talking about inaudible communications gestures uh cultural uh cultural context but we'll be talking mostly about sign language tonight and you maybe see that we actually have somebody on here doing signing right now translating we like to be inclusive with our show and this right here is going to be linda she's going to be with us the next few weeks and she's actually doing some of her time taking a sign language school so they'll have more information on that right now she's kind of running a little bit late tonight but all's good so y'all stuck with me and my dad jokes insert laughter canned laughter okay so we're killing a little bit of time we're only eight minutes and 46 seconds from the show and we're going to so i'm going to do my part and i'm going to share some links I'm sure doing the right thing doing that right now matter of fact i'm gonna give away the ghost so James. Got, yes Okay, you can hear me. Yeah. I was muted for some reason. But remember, we got to take muted. turns. We got to take turns because it's completely impossible for Linda to sign language while we overlap. So we have to take turns. Yes. Do I raise my hand? Yes. And you have to raise your hand. I'll try. But our cameras are muted, so whoopsie. That would be very hard to tell everyone. Hey. My hand's raised. <laughs> well, my hand's I'll just say I raised my hand because I can't cut you off. Okay. I can't right. cut you off. We, uh, we can't all right, everyone. everyone, welcome. It's Friday night. It's that time of weekend where we get to do our fun late night craft talk. And we're so excited because we have a really great show for you. Um. We talked about this earlier when we did our live here a couple hours ago to talk about tonight's show. You said that you were incorporating fun into this. Um, that's a problem. That's not fun? This no. isn't going to be fun? I'm confused. No. Please explain. Okay. Normally, we do the show straight-faced, no gags, and we do it in the form of, in the, in the tradition of Bueller. Bueller. For those of you kids that don't know, that's... Uh, What's that movie? Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Ferris Bueller's Day Off. That oh, I see a comment. I see somebody watching. It is the president of the Friday Ninja Monster Hunter Squad. It is Maya who has joined. So we've got first viewers. All right. I'm getting ready to share. I hope you are too. Yes. So we are just minutes away from starting our show. So make sure to share our links with your friends. Uh, you know, a lot of people, they would really love to watch the show. It's going to be a very interesting show. We have a great topic and something that maybe a lot of people don't know about. So I think it's going to be interesting for everyone. I think so too. Right now I'm sharing. Did you share? Yes, I'm working on sharing right now. You So you didn't share yet. No. Is that a preemptive yes idea I'm sharing? No, I'm sorry. That's okay because I'm typing and then I have to go back and look at what I typed in and went, um, I, I typed that? Because it's in another language called Bungalese. Yes. Tonight's episode. Okay, I'm typing this out. Tonight's episode of Capitalized Date Night Craft Talk! Exclamation point and hit post so now i get to blue people's newsfeed with our cool show but not fun yay that's awesome james this is such a fun show you guys i'm very excited to share this week uh and i'm really excited like this is such a cool show this is gonna be fun oh my goodness um fun no 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 Savannah, tell yourself no fun we're not allowed to have fun tonight. That's no, what you're, you're not. Maya, tell her. You've seen every episode almost. Tell Savea, no. People want to sit here and they want to watch the show and we want them like, 
zombified at the end with like drool coming off their bow or lip going, uh, like watching C-SPAN for six and a half hours straight. Um, Folks, we are the C-SPAN of the internet. Come on, Sylvia. Uh, well, we're like the show that you want to watch on Friday nights. Hello. You don't like watching C-SPAN at 11 o'clock on a Saturday night? No, I think I'd rather watch our show on a Friday night. Uh, true. Matter of fact, I am just, I, I, I'm seriously going to do this. I'm going to look out. I'm going to look. Let me bring it up. I'm going to look at C-SPAN schedule and see what plays on Saturday night at C-SPAN. Let me look it up. C-SPAN schedule. C-SPAN schedule. Folks, look it up too. Tell me what they, tell me what the schedule says, what they play at 10 o'clock on a Saturday night. TV God C-SPAN. I'm looking this up. And there's the TV guide for C-SPAN. You going to do this too, Savea? Yes, sure. Yeah, I tell you are. All right, video by most recent raving. Okay, date. I think that I think that our interpreter is doing a great job because we are talking so fast, our hands are moving so fast. This is really cool. My hands up. Okay, your hands up. Yay! Okay, so uh, why don't you go and give a little introduction with Linda, what she's doing, and hair background, just so we put in context for our audience. Okay. Let's see if we can find that. I had a note. It was somewhere. I remember. Here it is. Okay. There you go. So let me tell you. Um, so our guest interpreter, her name's Linda Diaz, and she's volunteering uh, because she is going through and interpreting um, interpreting American Sign Language interpreting program uh, through Riverside City College. And um, she's going to be doing this interpreting for our show until June. So this is something that she can do so that she can um, practice and get um, experience working as an interpreter. And so we're really excited about that. I think that's a really cool thing that we're doing for her. And, we're, and we enjoy it. We love seeing this. This is awesome. Absolutely. Okay. So for the record, C-SPAN does on Saturday nights, they do American History TV. And they do lectures on American history. And tomorrow night's going to be actually it's kind of cool. 1960s African American voter registration speeches and covering. I actually, I actually watched that. That's very cool. Well, now we know. I'm gonna watch C SPAN tomorrow night. Of course, tomorrow I'm actually in Riverside all day assisting with and take and be a student in a wilderness remote first aid class so that I can put a band-aid on a person. 50 miles from the nearest road. Yes. Yes. So. <laughs> Got to be overqualified. All right. A uh, minute and 48 seconds to the show starts, folks. Yay. So I know. Can you believe it? It is almost time to start the show. So make sure you get your shares in. And, um, oh, I would like to quickly mention, we have some fun posts. We have Maya saying, let's see. She's saying. I would totally want to watch this show instead of that. Of course, who would want to watch C-SPAN over late night craft talk? Carol Ann. I'm sorry, I wasn't paying attention. I was looking at C-SPAN. <laughs> and we have Carol Ann Blackwood back. Hello, Carol Ann. She says, hello from Pismo Beach. She's camping with her sister. She's one of our regulars. So it's really nice to see um, everyone saying hi. And Maya says... Uh, Woohoo! Thank you for interpreting. You're awesome. So that is really kind of a nice. We have lots of positiveness that comes out of our show. So actually, you know what? And I think well, if we, if any of our viewers know sign language, turn off the sound and just go by what you're seeing being signed by Linda. I want to know your impressions, just not not accuracy thing. I just want to know what what your feelings are watching the show with just the signing. That has got to be the coolest thing. I think that's really cool, honestly. Um, I Linda is one of our customers, and she came into our store, and we were just talking, and she was telling me how she was doing this program, and I was like, "Oh, you do interpreting?" I said, "Oh, maybe you can come on our show," and she's like, "Really?" And so countdown, countdown, oh, countdown. Oh my goodness! Here we go. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, three. Two, one. Woohoo! No time. 
It's time for Late Night Craft Talk with hosts of Aya Kamori Yang and James Hermes. On tonight's show, sign language and other forms of inaudible communication. You know, I tried taking a communication class in college, but I ended up hating discourse. It's time to start the show. Let's rearrange. Yeah, and we got to There. Okay. Oh, that looks yeah. good. How are you doing, Savea? I'm doing good. Oh, my goodness. This is really great. I'm glad to see us here. And we have a lot of viewers. So, welcome. And I wanted to just mention uh, for those of you who haven't watched our show before, we do the show on a, every Friday night, and 99% of the time it's live. And we actually stream it on Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, and, you know, maybe some others in the future. But um, we have been doing the show for almost, what did you say, almost three years. Uh, Wait, no, we're, three oh, years. we're approaching next month. will be two years. Every Friday. We have not missed any Fridays. Every Friday. Yes. For two years, starting about just a month and a half. We'll have our two-year mm -hmm. anniversary. Yeah, and we've been doing this to promote local businesses, promote artists, um, tell people about interesting things, open their eyes, um, entertain, and we've done so much. Uh, the show has grown so much in just the short time that we've done the show. So um, if you get a chance, make sure you like and subscribe our Facebook channels, our Facebooks, our YouTube channels, and, you know, then oh, you'll I always matter of fact we've been on we've been voted the number one show on friday night the number one show on friday night to feature be featured on elk rack or dancing bears channels yes and we actually got the friday night late night craft talk award for best late night craft talk show yes this is our trophy the mike award this is a major award, guys. Major. And we worked really hard for this award. I want to thank all of the fans, all of our friends, all of our family, and our customers, and everyone who's watched our show through the time. James, do you yes. have your introduction speech? This great award. And folks, from Savannah and I were talking about this, and the number one person we want to thank for us earning this award, giving out an award ceremony just a week ago that was hosted and attended by Savay and I. Matter of fact, we are 100% of the audience. We want to, we want to make sure that we want to thank the one person that we want to that really brought this together. Me. Wait. <laughs> no. <laughs> James. What? Seriously, that's me. What we agreed to that you weren't at the you, you got to attend the meeting, Savay. You missed the meeting. You missed these discussions. Oh, was that while I was napping with the K-N-A-P? But don't just get so old. When you're a napper, people go, oh, napping. It's like, <laughs> I've heard that so many times. And when you do that, I'm like. <laughs> but you know what? Everyone loves it. That's why I do it. The, fun, the one who thinks it's the funniest is you. I what know, right? The, the, crap, the, the Mikey Award. Okay. Let me go ahead and put yep. that back up on the shelf here. And we'll have to yeah, get make, a, group, a group picture with us with that next weekend. So, Savannah, what's sure, going on? With, what? I was going to say, make sure to not lose it, okay? Because it has to spend some time at my place. So, you know, we share the award, right? I'll take a picture of it with me holding it, and you can put it as your wallpaper on your phone, your PC, your desktop, and your uh your digital <laughs> your digital picture frame <laughs> all right oh what's going goodness. on with dancing bear this week so coming up well this week we were working and we we really have been bombarded with orders for graduation stoles which is really awesome um so we've been working on getting those all made and cutting all the blankets and getting everything taken care of our first batch is at the seamstress, and so we're working on getting those all done. And something coming up uh, is something that's coming up that's pretty awesome is on March 12th, it's just around the corner, 
We have a elk rawhide drum class at Dancing Bear and Trader. And it's being taught back. by this really famous, famous, famous craftsman. Do you know who it is, James? The one who won the award for us. Me. <laughs> <laughs> it's a healthy conceit. <laughs> yes. So everyone, um, if you are interested in signing up for the drum class, there is room. Um, we have a deadline of signups for March 8th because we actually have to order in the rawhide elk drums and we have to prepare them before the class the night before. So make sure to sign up for the class. It's on our website. And um, I will put the link in the chat so you guys can see it. And I'll post it up on the screen in a second. But make sure to um, sign up or tell your friends because... This kind of class, we only do it once a year. So it's definitely something that a lot of people love to do. Uh, Carol Ann's done the class. She's had a great time with it. And you learn how to do a different craft that um, some people don't necessarily um, know how to do. And it's really pretty cool. And James yeah. makes it fun. So, and we'll I'm both be there. Class right now myself, because it sounds awesome. Yeah, you should sign up for the class. But I'm typing the way I type. And I misspelled my name. I spelled it with a Z. So, hey, James, Yes. what's going on with elk rack right now? Okay, some of those feathers that I showed a few weeks ago, uh, the Royal Palm Turkey and some of the others, I have a chance to get the fans done, but I got two done this weekend. I was actually going to come over and bring them on the show, but I was working on the credits before, and I forgot to get them out of the case in my warehouse. So I'll be doing that today. I'm going to like let you have the show for like a minute and a half while I go grab those, and I'll show them at the end of the show, folks. I promise. Okay. They are pretty. Okay, cool. Absolutely. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to show the link. Hmm. Do so. I'm going to show the link for this like class. So it's on our website, shop.dancingbearindiantrader.com. If you type in the classes, actually. Yeah, Did you do that on my Twitch? I, it's on all of them, yes. Okay, okay. It's on all of them. All right, I see that. Yes. Because I just saw so, Twitch, I was like, oh, there, yeah, there it is. I was actually looking for the message from Dancing Bear, and I almost did, I didn't see it posted on Dancing Bear. That's weird. And I looked up, and I see that we're on the Dancing Bear Facebook page. So that was weird. Usually, it pops up on all of the different feeds. So. Understood. All right. Um, so, yeah, folks, learning how we'll be talking about and sharing some of the traditions of the hand drum. Put in the context of what like powwow drums and drums in general with the pow the features of powwow native culture and we'll be doing a demo of songs and just a lot of fun we actually have people that have flown down in the past we actually was it bakersfield or bay area bay area someone flew from san francisco area to come take down, the class down to san diego rented a car drove over for the class and we've had people who come down from bakersfield drive or fly for the class because you know it was just amazing that they did that so i mean just it's humble to be able to have people think that highly of the class they come down here despite savannah yeah. i was waiting for that face okay all the time let me tell you that was totally unprovoked guys <laughs> hey we have a lot of watchers guys right now we have a lot of watchers all right so with this, um, where are we at? Ten, 10? Yeah, we're about 10 minutes in. All right. Yeah. I like my water. Okay, so tonight, should we get started with tonight's subject? Yeah. Do you have a slide to show, James? I could. Well, let me get one up. Okay. So while we're doing this, let me get up Mr. Slide. So guys, watch when James isn't paying attention. You need to... Oh, I'm sorry. You're listening, James? No, I'm watching C-SPAN. <laughs> Man, I was going to try to play a joke on James, and I didn't get a chance to. Dang it. Okay, we're out of slide. Ready? One, okay, two, three. Slide. Tonight's show, sign language and other forms of communication. Watch us on March 4th at 10 p.m. when we go live for that show. Really? Like in the in the future or in the past? I don't know. I'm watching. Are we? I'm watching us right now. You are? It's like almost a weird, like... 
sci-fi world where it goes around in circles where you're looking at yourself and you're looking at yourself in the mirror yes because i'm looking at myself now matter of fact that said let's go look at the about 15 seconds in the past shall we <laughs> okay we're gonna do this. now folks you know, of course you see that we're uh that we have linda signing for us tonight and we were talking earlier in a pre-show meeting wondering you know a lot of times there's uh You've got programs like in Facebook and YouTube that will create automatic subtitles for anyone that's hearing impaired or just prefers to read because they can't stand the sound of Savea and Mai's voice. Because I di I dissed both of us, okay? I dissed both of us. Okay. All right. It, see, equal opportunity. We're inclusive. Okay. Make sure it's inclusive. I don't know if I would call that inclusive, but um, <laughs> so we've, let me get it lined up here. Uh, we were wondering just how accurate are the subtitles? Because right now I've got them on, on my screen. I've got a, a live feed of uh, uh, Dancing Bears Facebook and Elkrax Facebook. And I'm looking at this, but I, I never pay attention to the subtitles. So what I'm going to do right now, let's load up. Let me get it up. I'm going to load up the uh, video from, say, Dancing Bear, a live of right now, what we're looking at. Mm -hmm. We're gonna look at the subtitles. This may be like way confusing everyone, just so you know. <laughs> There's a turn off the sound. Okay, let me share this. Ready? Okay, share it. All right. Here's what we look like 15 seconds ago. Let me get rid of that little Facebook notes in the corner. Okay. So right now, there's like I said, a 15 second feed, and we're gonna keep on looking at ourselves loop. But let's look right here. Uh, to click we look okay. I'm looking at. Are you looking at the subtitles? <laughs> I can't even read it that small. <laughs> I guess I could. Oh my gosh, it's just like one of those mirrors, James. I don't think this is working for your idea that you're trying to do. <laughs> Actually, it is. This is a setup. I was going to say this is going to happen. <laughs> I can sign oh with another God. computer. All I know is there's more of us than what the world is ready for. Wow, this is like you know in Star Wars, Last Jedi. So when let's, uh, wait, we're gonna, wait. We're gonna try this quickly. We're gonna check it out. Yes, right. see it. James. Remember yeah. Yeah. when in Rises or in the Last Jedi, Ray goes into this cave, and there's this big glass, and she looks at it. She's like, and it's like, and she looked back. She's like, yes. That's what it reminded me of. So okay. we almost really had a Star Wars moment just a second ago. Gotcha. All right. Let me try. Let's try this again. Let's see our live feed. And okay, let's try it. Let's see what it looks like. How accurate is the, are we seeing it? Yes, we are. Let me try, try this again. Let's see our live feed. You know, it's actually kind of accurate because I'm looking at it now. Interesting. All right, try, say, say something like just say like something, uh, some confusing words, words. a confusing sentence. Quote, quote something. I don't even know what to say. I mean, goodness gracious. How about the seashore has lots of seashells that are sparkling in the shining ocean? Well, it said, goodness gracious. He ended up going to jail for okay. Well, we played this to death, but um, it's actually surprisingly <laughs> accurate. It's doing well. That's cool. Let's so, try it with a foreign language. But you know what? Of course, I actually prefer that we have an awesome interpreter. So that's, that's even better because, you know, honestly, um, the automatic captions is almost like an AI situation. And you know how we feel about H R A I. I just realized we missed the opportunity for a cool bit with H R A I. Oh well, well, next time. I really love it. All right, <laughs> I'm going to test it with a foreign language. Okay, this is the interpreter interpretation. Let me let me let me ask something in Spanish. Oh Sorry my goodness! This, All right, let's try it. Uh, Donde donde está el sala de baño? Let's see what it says. <laughs> is it really going to do that? We're about to find out. A uh, salad de baño. 
<laughs> Let's see what it, El Salad de, El Salad de Baño. See, that's why you can't rely only on a caption that's computer gem, generated because it's asking for a salad of the bathroom. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I'm going to try it. Let's try German. Ready? No, James, this is already. Shh, 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 shh. Let's move forward. I'm, I'm having fun with this. <sighs> Folks, let us know in your comments. Should we continue? But we'll go ahead and move on. But we'll revisit it if that's what our audience wishes. Okay. Otherwise, we're just going to play. I'm just going to watch C-SPAN. All right. Let's we'll start. <laughs> okay. All right. So. James, did you want to go over what you found uh, information about sign language or do we want to start yeah. with? So Sabine and I are taking the approach tonight that usually we do a whole, we do a lot of research through the week and we want to, we bring out the information and presentation. We've decided to take the unique approach and we're going to, we're investigating this and we're going to look it up and share it in this conversation as we learn it. We're going to be learning this the first time as we share it with our audience tonight. So we're sharing, we're not bringing information that we discovered over the week. We're discovering it together at the same time. And it's a new approach for us. So we're going to give it a try. So right now, let me look it up. Okay, different keyboard. Okay, the history of sign language. And we actually have, a, uh, I looked it up and so I believe Savannah did too. Okay, I'm actually looking up a Wikipedia article. And Wikipedia is amazing with this stuff. Okay. The record, the recorded history of sign language in Western society starts in the 17th century, so the wow. 1600s. Wow. As a visual language of method of communication, although references and forms of communication using hand gestures date back as far as the 5th century BC in ancient Greece. Sign language is composed of a system of conventional gestures, mimic, hand signs, and finger spelling plus the use of hand positions to represent the letters of the alphabet. Signs can also represent complete ideas or phrases, not only individual words. Mm -hmm. I didn't know it dated back all the way to the 1600s or got it there. I'm sure it got standardized in the 20th century. But I didn't That's, know. Yeah, I, I believe it because, you know, for years and years and years, I mean, pretty much there always has been someone who might have a hearing impairment, and that has been a really great way to communicate. So, I believe it. Absolutely. Let me, real quick, let me close the door of the office because somebody's trying to sleep real fast. So, James, do we want, okay. So, do we want to talk about the different um, in in general, like, and there's several places in the world in in different aspects of the world that uses visual communication gestures and visual communication not verbal yep. to communicate and we were thinking about it and just making lists of things and we're thinking wow this there really is a lot of people that use it use a language that has no verbal and visual yeah uh there's some there's many nations that uh native nations that you know, use the lip point. Oh, and yes. It's actually, some call it cultural, the lip point, like you see in the, like in some Philippines or Asian cultures, you know, the. I remember no. one time I was talking with a friend and talk, I'm talking with this friend. We're in a native class, you know, she teaches a native class. I'm there to try to do some, do a song with a hand drum. This is about 12 years ago. And we're talking. And she goes, eh. And I'm going, you know, it was a hawk, but you know, it's like, Usually people go, hey, look at that. Well, this is actually considered rude pointing in a lot of native cultures. And she's just, and I'm like, I haven't seen that in a while. I haven't seen that in a little while. I went, there's a hawk. But you know, they're talking, they may just go, you know, they'll tell you directions, but they'll go, uh, uh, go left uh, over, go just uh, look for the sign. And, and then uh, maybe when you look at the road, go. And then and I've actually seen that. Really? <laughs> you know. I was a friend's you know, friends uh, looking for a friend's place in Valhalla Reservation several years ago, and he was like, out, "You know, sheep camp, living in the outback, Navajo." And and I'm talking as one person, you know, chapter house, and like, "Hey, you know, get over to this place." Bro's waiting for me, and she goes, uh, "Yeah, I just go over that road over there, and and then uh, maybe ten miles, and and then uh, and I'm like, I miss this because I used to see that a lot as a kid out there." You know, my first experience 
with the lip pointing is when I was working at the ASU powwow back in goodness, this was like probably in the, in the late nineties, early, this early 21st century. <laughs> and the coordinator Lee, he would actually say, Hey, Savea. <laughs> and it, and I always remember that he, he's, you know, he's in heaven right now, but, I remember those little fun things that he would do. And that was the first time I saw lip pointing. And I found out that my father-in-law, um, I Dan, my husband is Filipino. I found out from my father-in-law that he lip points too. And I thought that was really interesting. That's why when we were talking about it, I said, hey, that's that that cultural thing that a lot of natives do the Filipinos do it too. And Maya says, LOL, my grandma does that all the time with the lip point. So for sure. Gotcha. Yeah. Amazing. Um, another thing, show notes. yeah, another thing <laughs> that okay. you notice is that in sports, there's a lot of hand gestures. So like in baseball, you have the pitcher and the catcher signaling each other and the base runner coaches, they're signaling, right? Oh, yeah. There's a famous scene from the movie uh, Major League back in the night. I think it was the late 80s, early 90s, or even uh, Naked Gun. Yes. You got the scene from Naked Gun where the guy, you know, between the uh, the catcher and the pitcher or even the up, they're going... <laughs> I remember the like whole conversation is just, you know, just the thing. And you got the, you know, you got the cat, the, the pitcher going, and you got the, you got the catcher going. And you know, the pitcher's going, and you know, it's just amazing what they do. And you have like the basement and you, you see them going like that. It's like a whole argument just between what the dude's going to pitch and the play they're going to do. Yeah. And I remember playing softball and, we were always concerned that the other team was figuring out our our hand signals, you know, from the the base runner coach to the batter, you know. So we always were concerned about that. You're always, Another, always, you're always changing up what your what each thing means. Yes, and then James, weren't you talking about in um, kayaking? Yes, I actually had to do this for a trip a couple of weeks ago. I had 23, 25, 23 people on this trip. We had about seventeen boats total. So you can use kayaks. And I'm having to tell this whole group uh, before we go out. I said, okay, here's what the gestures. And this is the, you know, the inaudible communication. I said, okay, if I blow a whistle, you hear two quick whistles and I hold up the paddle and I point away. This means uh, hazard over here. Or if I do a long whistle and I go like this, that means go river left or, you know, go the left of the river or the right of the river because there may be a sandbar or another obstacle. And, you know, even sometimes if you see it where I may put up my paddle and point like this and go because sometimes we're too far spread out for the whistle. Uh, I may, you know, may, you may see me go like this and then point. But so we've got this whole thing that says go here, go there or assist somebody just based on holding up the paddle, pointing it and then tapping the head or tapping the head and then side. And so we have this whole thing. I mean, granted, we're not going to tell War and Peace or discuss how to our tax. Talk, discuss our taxes or have a whole intellectual conversation, but at least we know the base of the communication there and the point. Mm -hmm. And that's just river running. How do you get more of that? Even when we look at aviation, and the hand gestures. Yes. Yeah. So there's also the, the military, like when they're doing covert, covert, you always see the movies where they're like, And then one guy's like, "What?" <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, you, you know, oh, I, there's, there's, a, there's a method of the madness even there. I have some friends that worked uh, SWAT, and they talk about it how they go, and you know, they just do the quick thing. Which so, you know, it, it's, it's amazing that uh, you know each gesture represent a whole tactic that they will swallow. Whether they go into a room like two by two, go in storm, if they go in like gun certain way. And just that whole tactic. And you know, actually, there was this. You ever seen the Star Trek episode uh, where you got a species 
and their whole written their whole oral communication is nothing but allusions to stories that tell what they're tell what they're communicating so you you've got the famous line uh Char Darmok and Jalar by the ocean Darmok and Jalar by the sea and by reference to the Darmok it's you've got this between Patrick Stewart and this alien captain Patrick Stewart and Jean-Luc Picard uh he's able to have this whole conversation with this group by learning what the stories mean and he'd, he'd say the stories and quote you know a character from the story that would bring up this whole scenario in the way they communicate and water shots. and that's another level of communication that's pretty amazing so this would be kind of a connected to that the film industry so oh, yeah. you know you have, you have the cameramen that like count down when they're going to be doing the filming um and they have like the cut and all the different things, they're non-verbal cues because people have to know, okay, we're gonna start film, we're gonna stop film, um, we're pausing the film. And so again, those are more communications. Absolutely. Matter of fact, uh, I'm sorry, for some reason I got confused because I still got video playing over on this monitor of when we were showing the like, <laughs> It's trippy, okay? It's really trippy right now because like, this one I've got a full of uh, where we're on YouTube and streaming and I was looking at their subtitles. I've got two screens over here on this side that show uh, our in case there's interruption between our two respective business Facebook pages. And I'm looking at right here. And so I'm looking at like multiples of us going talking right now. And I look this way, went, oh, wait, look at this screen, dude. Dummy. It's so kind of weird. Another. See me in my periphery. Another um, industry that uses hand cues are the music industry. So similar to the film industry where they like keep rolling, recording, stopping, starting, and, you know, adding in sound, you know, you have an orchestra, you have an orchestra leader, mm -hmm. a conductor. So there's a lot of different, you know, communications with that, but, you know, I wanted to touch back on um, my experiences. I'm doing, I'm doing the orchestra gestures, like from Looney Tunes <laughs> cartoons. Da, da, da. Okay. So I wanted to say, um, back when I was in college, uh, one of my roommates for the summer, she actually was in the sign language, American Sign Language program at ASU, and so she had a lot of friends that were hearing impaired and um, really nice people. And we actually, this is kind of fun. We went to, as college students, we went to a nightclub together. And um, the interesting thing is, is that her friends, this was actually, this is way cool. Back in the day, we would travel, we were traveling in two cars. And what they did was they would sign, they would use sign language and they would talk to each other from two separate cars and have conversations. This is before cell phones. So this is kind of fun, right? So they're like, hey, do you want to go to eat after, you know, and the, and all of a sudden we were, set, we were told, okay, we're going to go to this restaurant because they want to go eat now. And we're like, oh, okay, cool, you know. But um, we went to this nightclub and one of the guys, he loved to stand right next to the speaker. And, you know, usually when you go to those clubs, you kind of stay away because they're really loud. But he actually liked to stand next to the speaker because he could feel the music. He could feel the beat from the speaker. And I thought that was really cool because, you know, I never thought of that as someone I can hear. But he has always had a hearing impairment. So for him, that was for his, his way to enjoy music. And I thought that was very cool. Outstanding. It reminds me of like many years ago, uh, I'm singing a powwow on a drum and we had a person come over and they just, you know, hearing impaired, obviously, and they put their hand, they were talking and they just wanted to kind of feel as they're singing, they get permission to do that. And they just like the reverb of the drum and they could see us going, but you know, a, a good powwow drum is going to reverb from just talking around it. I've got a power drum in my room that I have to, I keep it covered up, but if I, un, if I uncovered it, it will actually, I can hear my voice reverberating against the drum head. I love a drum with a lot of reverb where you pound it and you hear that boom, 10 seconds later. It's awesome. 
-hmm. but just talking like that and they could you know catch up the reverb and i'm just always in a way envied what they're feeling and it's such it's such a foreign uh experience for us being able to hear what they're feeling on that with the reverb from the drum and the voices at the same time it's got to be such a such a unique and just foreign to us experience on that one it's amazing mm -hmm. uh even yeah. with that um you know as you mentioned you know even even talking uh your friend signing even looking at like say a sporting event where you have an interpreter that is using sign language to sing the national anthem in that one and you know that's all taken through the jet you know that the i'm sure the elegance of the hand movement of the person singing that's got to be amazing i wonder mm -hmm. how they sing rap that's interesting you know, the one other thing I wanted to talk about for that that experience that summer. So have you ever heard what a TTY phone is? Touch to the drawing of the house. Y'all later. I don't, actually, I don't know what the actual initials are, but Google. yeah, Google it really quick. But what, this this phone has been around for a long time. I don't know exactly how long, but this phone was actually a phone that's you can dial up, so you can call you can call TTY phones to TTY phones, and what happens is that there's a keyboard, and it actually shows a message at the it shows a message that a person on the other end is typing. So that was my first experience with the TTY phone because people would call for my friend, and I would answer because I was there, and I would say, "Oh no, she's not here right now." But do you want me to leave a message? You know, whatnot. Because exactly. I was her roommate, and, and I thought sure. that was really cool. It was like a keyboard. Yeah, uh, we have a comment. I was looking it up, and you said it was called TTYL. TTY. TTY. Okay, because right now we have one of our uh, viewers right here. Thank you, uh, January Chu. I'm sorry if I mispronounced your name, but teletyper. It's a. It's a. It's a. Teletypewriter. Whoop! We hit we hit the wrong we hit the wrong same comment at the same time, and I actually took it down. Teletypewriter. Yes. Teletypewriter, because I actually hit TTYL, and I went, I should have known better. <laughs> it's not that. Talk to you later. Yeah, it's actually it's really amazing that there's a lot of different um, services that help people that are hearing impaired, and especially you know with technology. I think a lot has happened in the last so many years, especially with, you know, cell phones and texting and whatnot. It has really helped a lot of people. Yeah, I'm looking. I'm just out of curiosity. I'm actually looking for the first time, purposely looking at the subtitles. And uh, I'm, I'm sure Linda is much more accurate, but it's doing pretty good. Yeah, she's doing a good job. She's keeping up. It looks like it. Yeah. So what yes. are the... One of the things that we also wanted to touch on is we wanted to touch on the cultural visual communications. Uh, besides, we were talking about the Native American and, and the lip point, but there's a lot of different things that um, are visual communications that we've seen, um, like, for example, dancing. Dancing in like you, I don't know if you've heard about the the description of tango where it's a conversation of dancers. Have you heard that before? Because the way that your feet are positioned, that's a yes, no, maybe. And so when you're walking with your legs crossed a certain way, it's a no. If you're walking with your legs open a certain way, like when you're just your step, that that's a yes or a no. I'd always interpret that if somebody's walking cross-legged, it means you've got to go to the bathroom. Well, there's a lot of, in, in dance and ballroom and, in, you know, swing dance, there's a lot of expression. Uh, my husband and I used to swing dance. And when you're dancing with people, like, there's a lead and a follow. And the way that the lead communicates, they communicate certain dance moves by using hands, and just like leading with like their hands and lifting arms and whatnot. So it's, it's really fun to learn, you know, different forms of communication. Um, and I thought 
you know, dancing is kind of a neat thing to kind of bring it up. Oh, you switched your sides. How did you do no, that? I, I don't want to be on that side. I don't want to be on this side. <laughs> anyway, but I'm yeah. Which way I want to go with my lips. James. There we go. Oh my goodness. So, yeah. So there's this, there's dancing and people don't really think about that, I think. Um, and in Japan, for example, there's several different things that they do. Like they will bow at each other. That's considered, you know, respectful and greetings, right? You bow. And then another thing that a lot of people don't real think about, you know, that lucky cat, you know, the cat that has the hand that's like this all the time. Okay. You know, actually have a hand. Let me grab it. While she's doing that. Just to give another example, just on local. I mean, when you talk about dancing, honestly, the only okay, where we go with this? I'll go ahead. Continue. No, go for it. Go for it. So this is a Japanese lucky cat, and see how it's paws up. So yeah, what it's doing is in Japan, the the um, the gesture to call someone is said here in the U.S. Be like, come here, come here, right? This is what you do. You know, you, you kind of motion, like, come here, motion. In Japan, they go like this, come here. And the reason why they do that is because it's like, it's, uh, you know how cats, when they dig in dirt, they kind of comb the dirt towards them. Yes. So it's like bringing things, you know, it's, it's culturally, they see it as, you know, bringing things to them. So, um, that gesture of come here is the idea is you wanted someone to come over to you and the lucky cat actually brings in good luck by and, you know, bringing it in. Cultural basis says actually, when you look at another culture, that's actually kind of the exact opposite uh, at the country club. When I am done with the valet and the waitress taking my order at the country club, I go, we go on to the kitchen now, go on to the kitchen. You may go, be gone. Of course, if I was going like this, it would be come here to so somebody's Japanese. But, you know, at the country club, we go, you may be dismissed. Yes, this is true. But it's interesting because different cultures see it differently. Right. So, but yeah, I, I noticed that it's funny because my dad would be, I was like, come here, come here, come here. Gotcha. Um, when you talk about the dancing, I mean, when, uh, you talk, I know you did ballroom dancing. and I used to do swing dancing. Swing dancing. Specifically, I, specifically Lindy Hop. I don't. The only dance, seriously, the only dancing I know dance at all, dance style is powwow. That's it. If you ask me to do a Texas two step, I could do a parody of it, but in, in sincerity, when you go out there, all I know is powwow. Specifically, I mean, I've I've taught and know how to do this, the the hoop dancing up to a few, you know maybe twelve hoops, but specifically grass men's traditional. Um, and straight, and definitely you know, we all know round dance. And I have to work with some girls on their on their basic steps, which is there's a lot of commonality to it. Would say uh, women's swing shawl or fancy shawl. I love, jingle dress is one of my favorite categories. But uh, one thing I love is is a kid in the '90s, uh, early 2000s, seeing Vietnam vets during say um, a sneak up dance. And okay, and they would do this whole story. And we talk about inaudible communication, they would do a whole story about one of their missions when they're sailing to uh, missions in Vietnam. You get the Vietnam vets, and they're talking when they're out in the field, and they're reenacting a whole story to that, which is the basis for men's traditional or war dance is another misnomer, but a common name for it. Uh, and even then, to even now seeing uh veterans for deployment in the middle east afghanistan and iraq and seeing them they were in that tradition in men's northern uh carrying on that even i've even seen a little bit of chicken dancing is they reenact the stories when they're on deployment and i saw one and i watched one guy and he's going through it doing in that tradition and i went that dude's been to fallujah and i talked to him later in a private way and we went up and says do i saw you in there fallujah and he goes yeah man how'd you know it I know. Just we work with a lot of veterans, and it's amazing. Just that dance and the communication, 
and what you could tell from it, what they're doing, you get the general idea and amazing, just amazing to be able to just see that, that again, that word illusion, which is we're probably not probably not going to burn out that word tonight, but that illusion of what they're doing and seeing it pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. So I see that someone asked about lucky cat. So I wanted to kind of talk about that. So I really love like Japanese cultural um, folk art and um, there's a couple different things. There's a couple of really popular ones, but one of the real popular ones is the lucky cat. It's also called uh, a maneki neko, which is, it's a, a cat that's lucky. Okay. Neko is, is cat and they come in lots of colors and their paws go their right paw or the left paw or both their paws are up and they have lots of colors. And generally you see these at Japanese restaurants. They are. So everyone should know I'm making it. I'm making sure everyone knows right now. These lucky cats are Japanese. They're not Chinese. I went to so a Japanese restaurant when there was a lot of Buddhas. Well, you will see these in many Japanese. Asian restaurants, a lot of people don't realize that it is actually a Japanese tradition, but a lot of the Asian restaurants will pick up the cat and put it in their restaurant. We have them in our store. We have a whole bunch of them in our store, waving at the door. Come in, customers. Come in, customers. Are you sure the cat's not going, thank you, customers. You know, I go back to your car away from my club. I wish to <laughs> nap with an in, not a K. So for those of you who don't know, I like to tease James all the time because it's fun because it makes him mad. Um, he actually naps arrowheads. <coughs> Excuse me. He naps arrowheads and from gems from stones. And that's K-A-N. I'm reenacting. K-N-A-P. Na napping. Right. And so whenever he says he's napping stones, I'm like, I'm going to take a nap. Gotcha. I, nap. I want to do a couple. I want to call up on a couple of comments. We have our one of our viewers, Wendy Hodge, that says when I was talking about the Star Trek episode with the aliens that talk and referencing stories, they're the Temerians. And awesome. here's a neat fact that Wendy shared right now. Next Generation had a deaf actor in real life do an episode involving a deaf race and use sign language in the show. That's I think really I remember good. that episode. Wendy, can you go out and give us the name of that episode of Star Trek The Next Generation? That's awesome. I love that show. That was one of my favorite shows growing up. Yeah. You want to Google, well, there's a deaf actor that was part, of, you know, had a lead part in the movie The Eternals from the MCU. Let's look her up her name real fast. Because I think I remember that episode of Next Generation. But Wendy, let us know what that is. Uh, Lauren Ridloff. Got it. She was the one that was like super fast, mm -hmm. like the Flash, but yes. in Eternal, in MCU. Yes, yes. that's because cool. I'm hearing a DC a DC character. Mm -hmm. Got so, it. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Wendy says, "Give me a minute." She's 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 our she's one of our research uh, audience members. Like, if you have any question. You just ask Wendy and she'll get us that information and she'll post it in our feed, which is awesome. We don't need fact checkers because we're always telling the truth. Exactly. So I don't use the reference. <laughs> okay. A couple yeah. other things here with the, uh, I'm looking up just, I mean, I'm kind of glancing at some of the stuff right here for uh, this article in the history of, of sign language. And it talks about uh, earliest records being 5th century BC in Plato's Cratylus, where Socrates says, if we hadn't had a voice or a tongue and wanted to express things to one another, wouldn't we try to make signs by moving our hands, head, and the rest of our body, just as dumb people do it do it at present? Dumb is a, not dumb like we're talking like, you know, me compared to Savea. I'd be the dumb one. See, I could pick on myself, Savea. Yes, you can. Pick on yourself all but you dumb want. Is being, dumb is the older term. For those that do not speak, and there are there are people that are hearing impaired that I'll say deaf, that some are silent and don't talk at all. Some will do. Some aren't great at reading lips. Some aren't. Actually, I was looking this up over the week. It was really interesting. And uh, the old the old connotation of dumb 
is the only one that does not speak. It's not oh. necessarily men, mentally uh, mentally impaired. It's obviously the, this is this is obviously not appropriate to be calling people that, but he's just talking about the history. I just want to make sure everyone knows that. Yeah, I'm putting it as a dumb as the old the old meaning, not the modern connotation of it. Mm -hmm. It's somebody that doesn't speak and, is, and is, does not have the, an audible, the audible communication. There's a whole thing to it, but that is the old definition of dumb. Stupid is another thing. That's like saying, that's how Savannah usually talks about me during the week. I'm guessing. James is so stupid. I do not say anything bad about you, James, ever. That's in your and imagination. I don't about you. Yes. Okay. So we're changing the subject. So Caroline was asking it. She says, I don't know if I missed it earlier, but how did Linda come into signing? So um, I met, um, or actually Linda um, just let, came into our store. She's been our customer for years. And she actually um, was telling me how she's doing this program and she's learning how to become a sign, a sign language interpreter, which I thought is really awesome. And so um, she said she needed volunteer hours um, to complete her certification. And so I offered, I said, Hey, if you want to come on our show and do some sign language interpretation, you're more than welcome to, because we, our show, we try to include everyone and we want everyone to, you know, learn something new. And some of the topics that we brought up tonight or some of the things that we talked about are things that people maybe don't necessarily think about. And we just try to put in light that information to kind of let people know something they didn't know. So this really falls into how we are about our show and what we try to teach people with things that we've come up with or, and whatnot. As you know, a quick, real quick, Wendy looked it up for us loud as whisper. I honestly don't remember that episode. So I've seen every episode start next, gener next generation. I'm going to look that up over the weekend. Thank you. Wendy. I think I remember watching that episode because we watched every, my mom and I would watch every single episode of Star Trek Next Generation. I've actually, I watched it through again. And then I think I watched it, started watching. I got about, about two thirds of the way through the Next Generation again. And I kind of got distracted and lost place. So I'd have to start over again. On that subject, season two of Star Trek Picard came out yesterday. I watched it yesterday morning. Borg Q one episode. Yeah. That was cool. You know. That's it. Okay. Moving on. Okay. You know. Okay. Touching on the whole Picard thing. Okay. I've always loved him. He's like such a cool captain. He's a cool actor. Everything. Right. So when I was watching through the series, you have to watch. And I don't know what episode it is, but you know, all those doors that people would stand behind the walls and pull them open at the same time. Those weren't automatic Shh. doors. Right. Shh. Right. Yeah. And so there's this one episode where Picard is walking from the bridge in the chairs. He's walking to the the lift, and he does this weird thing. He's like, like he does this. You can see him make this weird jaw face movement as he's walking because you see the side of his face, and he makes this weird face gesture. And I'm thinking, man, if I could ask him. What was he doing? Because it caught it on film, making this weird face go into the lift. It's 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 super visible, and I almost I wish I knew what episode it was because it kind of makes me laugh because I'm like he's so cool that he would put that into that episode, and the editors didn't even notice. Yeah, ah, well, time to look up Star Trek Next Generation trivia after the show tonight. Unless you like it. it might be on a blue let us know about that. It might be on a blooper reel. That might be where it is. It might be. I mean, it might be one of those things of like, bet you didn't know kind of things on YouTube. All right. So a lot of the whisper. Definitely going to look up at that. Yeah. Yeah, we're already 1050. I know. Can you believe it? We did not cover a lot of stuff we were going to bring up tonight because we thought we we're going to burn burn through material. Mm -hmm. This is such a cool subject. And we're yeah. brushing it. Yeah, we thought we get some stuff in depth. We're barely brushing the tip of it, just the communication. Amazing. Yeah, it all. You know what? And also, I would recommend everyone to learn. So, so there's, I'm sure there's lots of different YouTube videos out there um, to learn how to do some basic sign language. Um, honestly, like I think it's really great to know those things. Um, 
I have, I taught myself how to do the alphabet and it's not terribly difficult to learn. You just have to kind of remember, just practice learning it, but it is very handy to have some basic knowledge of basic sign language. Like there's thank you, you know, and, um, you know, I, and when I see someone, I've, I've said that, I said thank you to people that are hearing impaired and they really, it makes them happy because, you know, I'm including them. Yeah. And we have another comment definitely worth sharing from Wendy Hodge that will answer our question about that Star Trek episode. He was an ambassador that traveled with the Enterprise with three interpreters to negotiating difficult peace talks in one episode. I think you covered this and you was like the three interpreters represent the three emotions, right? Were you mentioning that survey in that episode of Star Trek? No. Because I remember uh, he used... Um, let me go right here. Okay. Let me hide that comment. So the one person is deaf. There was no way to do an artificial hearing device in this ambassador. And he came on very arrogant, but he got humbled halfway through the episode because he was able to communicate. He had three interpreters. One represented like uh, intellectual. The other represented emotion. And the other represented something else. I don't remember what the heck it, remember what the heck it was. And uh, he... Uh, I, partway through the negotiations with this race, somebody killed, shot him and killed the three interpreters. So he had no way to communicate. Um, and I'm just, I'm just recalling this is kind of, kind of flow of thought here. So he had no way to communicate. So he actually used data, he was able to learn quickly the, the sign language. So he's able to take the sign language the guys has, but he says data is great at doing that, you know, translating, but he doesn't, he's not able to convey the emotions that the interpreters represented with his emotions mm -hmm. and so what he did to uh do a peace negotiation between these two warring parties on this planet is that he just had he brought out this table and then talked to the car and they just said leave me here and so if they want to talk to him they're going to have to learn his sign language and it'll take a lot bunch of time and then from there teach him to do that and they would to communicate with him and that would bring them together at the same time I believe that was the whole episode, the, the premise of the episode, the major pull points. And this is an early, this is an early season within the first couple of seasons of Star Trek. They had some of the worst damn episodes, hmm. including that one with Wesley Crusher on the planet that wanted to kill him because yeah. he walked like he walked on the grass or something. Oh yeah, he tripped on something. They were concept episode. That was terrible. Okay, Will we? You know, I'm so glad that your character character didn't get killed in that episode. I would have been very sad. Because we want you on the show, Will Wheaton. Will Wheaton, come on, on our show. We'll be on yours. Yes. Okay. That's overreaching. Okay. Well, let's see. Why don't we, you know what? I have a good way that we can finish our show. Let's, let's say some words. Let's huh? say some more. Let's say some words that are in sign language. So we can say, thank you. So there's thank you. Okay, and then yes, yes. Okay. Okay, no. No, okay. Um, thank you. Oh, I said thank you. Hello. Okay, yes, okay. Is there anything you can think of, James? Um, thank you for watching our show. Actually, I don't remember that. So that's actually kind of cool. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So, but there's lots of things you can learn. And actually, um, in it, while we have Linda here as interpreting, it actually would be a really um, good way to kind of, if you watch what she's saying, as we say, um, you actually can just kind of get familiar with sign language. So I think that's really, really neat. It is. I do. Yeah. I've been holding this off for this one part, but we talked about, uh, you know, experiences working with people that are hearing impaired, deaf. Um, I used to work, and there's a couple fun stories to share. One is, uh, can I can I do this, or should I do this? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, go for it. I used to work for a couple of years. I would volunteer with this haunted house over Reno Valley, and these individuals would. Uh, it was a, uh, it was a deaf school, high school students, and the family member, you know, this one family, this one dude's sister went to the school 
and they volunteered to put together this as a fundraiser for the student body. And they would vault, have their whole house and turn it into a big haunted house. It's been a couple weeks. They brought me in just because I love that. Kind of, I love working haunted houses. I love scaring the heck out of people. Boop. It's fun. And, oh, my God. It's a lot of fun. Oh, yeah. And so, I mean, granted, I get, I'm like, I'm, I'm like, I'm in, I'm in 10,000%. And we're, I'm having, they want me to work with, because I've got a lot of experience with this, uh, scaring the best out of people working haunted houses, is they want me to go in and work with them on the students that are deaf in the haunted house and how to set it up and how to teach them to like spook people. Because beforehand, people, they just go out and go, and you know, like that, but you got to jump out at people. And so I'd walk through a scene and we'd rehearse it and they'd come out going, moon. And you know, granted, there's that, it, not a speech impediment, just what they are able to formulate. Typically, you have that certain accent or whatnot where they're going, hello, I'm this. And they come out and go, boo. And I'm like, that's different. But uh, work with them, you know, how to look for shades because they don't know when people are coming, obviously. So they got to look for like a shadow and this. And when I said come out, go, bah! and, you know, work with them. So they're coming out going, Mula! And just the moment was so amusing, but their effort, their sincerity to, to do this was really great. But, you know, it's just different when you have somebody coming out like, moo. And you're like, okay, let's, uh, let's make you scary. But it was, it's just really amusing moment and just really fun working with them. But probably my favorite experience working with somebody that's uh, working with a customer. I'm at an art show in Palm Springs. And we have this group of friends come over obviously they're deaf they're talking sign language and they had some uh questions about a dream catcher i had a couple of dream catchers and granted uh they don't like it when you type on the phone because it's frustrating for them it's slow and but sometimes that's the only way to do it but they come over and they're asking they're going they look at the dream, they look at the dream catcher going and i went and i was able to just it was something about the spirit of the moment that was able to talk about dream and then make a gesture for spider web in the dream and point to there and catch. And I don't know what inspired me to do those hand gestures, but it made so much sense to them that we had this whole conversation. And I, it's been a few, it's been a several years now, probably been about eight, 10 years. I don't remember every detail of it after rack my mind, but by through those gestures and they're asking about like material and I'm pointing the beads, but we're able to do that. Just, it, we, we found this commonality and an idea and we're able to build off that just through simple gestures i don't know a damn bit of sign language except for things that'll get me in trouble that we had this whole conversation sharing the knowledge of what the dream catcher is it was just and when they walked away i had shivers up my spine i'm getting them now going did that just happen that was amazing to hold that and was just the communication the spirit was there it was just a really a, a, a experience I treasure on that be able to establish that connection so quickly and so uniquely mm -hmm. that's what I got that's great and with that we seriously have two minutes left in our show <laughs> all right well we got to burn two minutes what's on week's next week's show Savia? next week you guys are going to love this love this love this so we have bees at my mom's house you have beads at your house? Oh, bees. Bees. Okay. Oh, my gosh. This makes me remind me. Okay. So if you guys watch Arrested Development, there is a whole thing where one of the, the sisters decides she wants to order open a bead store. And the brother's like, bees? Bees store? And she said, no, a bead store. He's like, bees store? So anyway, it's kind of a funny thing. When I, when I saw that whole snippet. I started laughing hysterically because they're just like, buzz, 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 buzz. you make so much money with beads. People make all kinds of stuff. They make jewelry. They decorate clothing. Lots of money at bead stores. And I started laughing because I'm like, yeah, no. Buzz, buzz. Anyway. <laughs> it was funny. But buzz, buzz. Um, this week, we're going to have um, Dan the Bee Man. And he's a local bee keeper bee remover and what he does is he actually removes bees doesn't kill them but he moves them to a new location with a new bee 
Keeper area. So it's really going to be a cool show next week. I mean, seriously, I've watched so many videos on TikTok about bee removal and how they move them. It's just so cool. Such a cool experience. Folks, and we're going to build a buzz around this show for a week. <laughs> and, oh, my gosh, he was, um, he was saying, or he actually asked us, he said, oh, my gosh, I would love to be a part of moving these bees. And he said, oh, for sure. You totally are welcome to come and help me. So mom and I are going to suit up, and we're going to. Seriously? Yeah. We're gonna what day? What day? Uh, next Friday. Assuming the weather's okay and all that. Friday? Yeah. It may so okay, it just depends. We may have to move it depending on you know the weather because like we were supposed to do it this today, but ended up being like fully rain. If I come down to Escondido a day early, I could do this too. Oh I'll spend the night at a friend's house over at Lakeside, Doug. If you watch the show, I'm gonna be calling you. And then do come do the drum class. We just gotta work out the drum. We'll we'll, we'll talk about this after we get done with the show, but <laughs> I could do this too and go buzz buzz. Yes. And he said that if there's any extra honey, we can have it. And there's any extra bees comb, we can have it. So we'll have beeswax from our own bees. Buzz buzz. So, but we are moving them because they've gotten quite large and they need a new home. Okay. Are we talk about the size of the colony or the size of the bee? The colony is quite large. Okay. Because I don't want to take on mutant giant bees. Okay. Yes. No. Okay, James, we're yeah. over the hour. One minute. Okay, folks. Let me line up the uh, closing credits real quick. Like, cause I don't have it queued up yet. Those two. As soon as I was enjoying the show too much. All right. Um, with that, folks. So Linda doesn't know we're this. Up the buzz on bees. So, okay, so Linda doesn't know this, but Linda, I know you did a great job of um, interpreting but at the very end of the show we like to dance our way out so i don't know what you want to do you don't have to if you don't want to but you're more than welcome to dance your way out okay we ready for closing credits yes closing credits uh this has actually been a surprisingly they're all fun but this one's a bit more scanned out than we've had uh we coached a lot of subjects and wendy thank you for looking at that information that that's outstanding and we spent more time talking about Star Trek than Star, <laughs> what's it called? War? War Stars? Oh, yeah. War Stars. Okay, Whatever okay. That minor Self, okay. self-proclaimed st Sith Lord. Okay. All right. So, end of the well, show. Few, fewer, more powerful. All right. Okay, Folks, this has been another episode of Late Night Craft Talk. We'll see you next week. Bye. Cue tap dance. Oh, ain't he cute? Good night, folks. <laughs>